Hello, my name is Tim Johnson. I'm a composer for multimedia. In the past I've done games, trailers, uh, feature films, even mixed a track, mixed a track for uh, KTV recently, um, which was quite a fun project. Um, so, I had my fingers in many pies. Um, what I'd like to talk to you today about is a sample library developer called Crypto Cipher. Now, Crypto Cipher do mainly Indian instruments. Um, but what I'd like to show you is how versatile these instruments are. CryptoCypher have gone to great lengths to make sure that these are extremely playable libraries, uh, very well recorded, extremely well programmed. Um, the versatility is, is quite incredible, really. Um, and what CryptoCypher wanted me to show you was how well these libraries that might not be your sort of your go-to libraries for writing e action or epic music, um, but they can do it. They can do it really, really well. And um, the best way I thought of showing you that was to actually write a short track. It's only a short thing. Um, but then afterwards, I'll take you through what I've done with each instrument. Um, and I think you'd be quite surprised that uh, how uh, what was once the sample of you know, you know a swarm handle or a dollop or something like that um, mm -hmm. has uh, tabla has turned into something quite different. Um, is, CryptoSoft is one of these libraries that have gone to sort of lengths to ensure that they've sort of messed with some of the samples and created really cool effects with them. Uh, so you can do these really cool drones and even something that sounds a little bit dubstepy. Uh, like, uh, we've called it the talk bass here, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so here's the track I wrote. I hope you enjoy it, and we'll go through it in a second. Okay, let's look at what we've got here. Um, so at the top here, we've got some some percussion and strings and piano and so on from different libraries. So I'm not going to talk about them. Um, the first thing that we come across when we get down to the crypto cipher libraries is the voices. Um, very well well recorded stuff um, in sort of traditional Indian scales or ragas. Um, I tended to latch onto this what what's referred to as the young voice patch because um, that's that sort of smoother um, had those sort of epic swells um, going on which kind of suited this track quite nicely. Um, so young voice of Raga is the patch that I've used most here. Um, there's two panels. The first one um, tells you what sample you're playing, and the second one um, is your effect. So going back to the first one, we've got where does the sample start? We've got volume, pan, attack, release, and a high and low pass filter. Uh, very simple. Down the bottom, we've got red keys, green keys, and blue keys. Now the blue keys are quite obviously the samples that are playing. Um, the red keys are which particular raga you're listening to, or scale you're listening to. And then the green keys are a subset of that scale. So if you let, let's have a listen. So if I okay, so let's go with this one here, and I'm going to use that. Okay, before I go any further, let me turn my reverb off. 
and yeah, here we go. And I'll turn the reverb off on this as well, so you get a really true representation of how this sounds. So. Okay, now if I play a different green key, but play the same note, here we go. So it's the same scale, but it's a different sample. Now play a different one, same note. So actually, for each one of these red red keys, there's three times as many. So that's really cool. There's 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 loads of samples in here. And one thing I should mention at this point is actually, if you go into the the actual folder itself where these samples are kept. All of the samples themselves are unlocked, which is quite unusual for sample library developers, um, because obviously for piracy reasons. But it's also it's fantastic for a composer to just go in there and click and drag that WAV file in, and it tells you exactly what tempo they're all at. Um, which brings me to my next point: that that was originally recorded at 110 BPM. This project's at 140, and it's synced to it. And actually, apart from the really fast ones, like the one we just heard. Oh no, sorry, Wait, let's go back to this one. I mean, even that one's pretty good. Um, the slower ones, you, I don't think you can tell at all. But the, the faster ones, some of them you can just about tell it's being stretched, which is completely understandable because stretching something by 30 BPM, you know, it, it's, it's going to affect the sound. But. I can't really tell that that was recorded at 110 BPM, um, and especially once you've got your reverb on it and it's pushed in with everything else, it's absolutely going to be fine. Um, so I was really impressed with the time stretching in this. Um, let's look at the effects that we've got here. So we've got an equalizer, a compressor, delay, and reverb. Um, so the main two things that you're probably going to be using on the on vocals is the reverb and the delay. Now, personally, I would always use my own reverb, but I thought Crypto Cypher have asked me to have a play with this, and um, so I did. And I was pleasantly surprised by how, how good this reverb is. I don't know if they've recorded their own impulse responses for this, um, or maybe Contact have just got a lot better with their reverbs um, since I last checked. But yeah, this sounded really, really quite nice. So let me just move out this out of the way and we can have a listen to it with the reverb on. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, I added a little bit more of my own reverb to push it into the project a bit more and make it all sound like it's on the same space. but. That's really quite a nice haul there. Uh, I added a bit more of a longer reverb to give it some tail, um, which I'll turn back on for you now, so you can hear how that all sounds together. Okay, one of the things we haven't talked about yet is the delay. So let's just have a quick listen to how that sounds. Um, if I turn the reverb off first, let's have a listen. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, we can, so we have a so we can increase the time in milliseconds. Uh, we've got the level damping spread. That was actually quite a wide spread. Um, if you had headphones on, you could probably hear that. Um, and you can control the feedback just like any other delay. Um, we spoke about the reverb. Let's have a listen to the chorus and the reverb together. Now the chorus is actually really subtle, it's it's really nice effect. Um, what, the, the preset that Crypto Cypher have chosen here is a, is a really good one, it's very sympathetic. Um, so let's just have a quick listen to that. And if 
I've got that turned up quite high. You can see how that would be really useful. Uh, Okay, let's talk about the harmonium. Now, harmonium uh, is a pretty cool instrument. Um, similarities with an organ, in the sense that it has, it has um, valves that you pull in and out. Uh, one of the coolest things about the harmonium is the coupler. Now, the coupler um, actually physically, on the real instrument, it physically locks um, the octaves together. So if you play C3, you can actually physically see C2 being pressed at the same time. Um, and that can create some really cool uh, drones and things like that. Um, and then you can change the tone of it with using the other valves and so on. It also has a pump on the back, um, which CryptoCypher have also sampled. Um, in fact, they've sampled sort of every element of it. They've gone in and they've recorded the, the noise of the key being pressed, the key being lifted off, uh, and the pump itself. So let's have a listen to how it normally sounds. This is what they call the master patch. So you see, I've got the the um, the on and off sounds quite loud here, so you can really hear them. And then we've got the pump down here. But if I actually, yeah, I'm just going to turn these down. For Okay, so quite a cool sound. Um, couldn't quite find a place for this particular patch in, in this piece, uh, but I can definitely see myself using that. Um, let's actually look at the ones that I did use. Now these are the, the, the things that I was talking about, how they've affected the sounds and made them sound really cool. So the one that I've got here, um, in fact, let's hear it in the track. So it's got quite a, it's got a fade on it, so it comes in slowly. But here we go. Okay, so not a sound that you're going to expect to come from a harmonium. Um, I was pleasantly uh, pleasantly surprised when I found that and um, add a bit of Native Instruments driver to it to get give it a bit of, a bit of grit and to uh, to take the top end off of it as well to make it sit better in the track and all that pulsy stuff is really great for action music and, and epic music. Um, so actually, let's bring that back and turn. Uh, we'll turn that off. And that's gone. And the other one that I've got on here is what is called the Crystal Arp patch, which you can see here. Uh, again, I've turned the um, the off key and the exit noise off um, because it just wasn't right for this track. But again, if it really adds to the realism if you're really going for the sort of the pure sound of the harmonium. Um, so let's have a listen to the crystal art. I think this one fades in slowly as well, so here we go. In fact, let me turn the effects off it first so you can hear how it sounds um, on its own. So we'll turn the reverb, and this has got a filter on it as well, so I'm turning those off, and here we go. So again, a really useful sound for action music to get that, that top end, just something flicking around up there. Um, if you add the reverb and the filter that I had on it, and here we go again.
Okay, so yeah, really useful sound. Um, there was another one that I quite liked. It's, this is the, um, what they called the grungy, uh, what's, what's the full name? But they, uh, oh no, this is the tremolo eighth note patch. Um, I did find that there's a grungy patch in here, which I quite liked, but um, couldn't find, quite find room for it in this track. Um, I couldn't quite find room for this particular tremolo patch either. This is a uh, tremolo uh, eighth notes. Um, but I just wanted to demonstrate how this sounded. So we've got a filter going on and off there, creating that pulsing sound, which is, I can, I can definitely see mis myself using that in more action music, especially when you, when you go um, down lower. And I mean, even if I was to, um, let's sort of, let's have a little bit of a play with this one. So if I was going to, let's say I wanted to add some, uh, some distortion to this one. So let's go to, uh, we'll just use the Cubase ones here. Um, distortion, here we go. really well to it. I'll probably turn the key noise off again, but you can see how that would become a really useful instrument there. Um, so let's turn that off. Okay, moving on. Let's have a quick look at the tongue drum. Now this is another one um, where I was I was quite surprised at the, at the breadth of stuff that was in this library. So let me just show you the number of things that we have here. So if I go into Crypto Cyphers folder and go into the tongue drum, there it is. Okay, so we've got something called the Fajura, sorry, the Fajara textures, and there's loads of these, and these sound like that. So I don't know how they recorded it. I suspect it's um, bowing the instrument. All really useful sounds. So for those ambient stuff, that ambient stuff to create nice textures. Just flick through a couple of these. Very useful for cinematic writing, that. All, all that kind of thing. It's really, really useful. Just go through a few more. Great for these sort of long evolving textures. Just one more. I can definitely see myself using that in sort of horror scores or something like that. That would be, yeah, that, that's, that's sort of where that's really at home, I think. Um, so we'll go back to the first one that I had there. Okay, um, not, not much in the way of um, stuff you can uh, change with, with these particular patches, um, but again, very, very useful. Um, so moving on to how the tongue drum actually sounds. So this is the master patch. Again, I've got a ton of reverb on that. Um, so let's let's get rid of that reverb so you can hear how it really sounds. There you go. Excuse the keyboard playing, I'm actually not a keyboardist, you may have guessed, but uh, you can hear, again, like, sort of a very, 
potentially a, an alternative to Gamelan or something like that, but it's 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 very very usable. Sounds like that you can really sort of get in there and change with your with your plugins and make it sound sort of um, very unique and it gives you something that not other pe that people aren't uh, aren't going to be using very much. Great, it's, it's a great sound. Um, I can definitely see myself using that a lot. Um, what else have we got here? So we've got um, a tongue drum rhythmic pad. Let's have a listen to this one. Again, so it's another another sort of flicky top synthy line. But again, you wouldn't have thought that that would come from um, come from this. I mean that that sound would be perfectly home in something like Omnisphere. I mean, very useful for action and sort of epic music, or even sort of you know these sort of like crime dramas and that kind of thing. These sort of CSIs and NCISs. Really great stuff. Okay, let's have a listen to the glitch pad. Okay, here we go. So I use this one for the sort of intro drone. I quite like the fact that it doesn't keep a sort of constant tone, it sort of fades. And up, up top, you can use it more of a more of a um, tonal instrument. Okay, cool, excellent. So that's the tongue drum. Really, really useful sounds in there. Let's move on to what's possibly my favourite instrument from Crypto Cipher. This is an instrument called the Swarmandel. Um, which, if you see a picture of it, is kind of like a. It's very similar to a harp um, on its side. Usually used for creating drones, um, but the way that you and I might use it is more of a well, exactly like a harp rather than a drone um, replacement for um, harps, pianos, plucked pianos, that kind of thing. So let's have a listen to how this actually sounds. Here we go. Or a replacement for an acoustic guitar, maybe. Really, really nice sound. So let's have a look at the instrument itself. So this is the one that I've gotten dry currently, as in no reverb. If you listen to it with reverb, that's when it really comes to life. Now that is an incredibly useful sound. Loads of reverb on that, but you can see how useful that kind of sort of not too twangy, sort of a very warm sound to it. But it's yeah, it, it, it's great. I can see myself using that instead of um, steel string guitars or uh, instead of even instead of a piano and so on, um, just to get a sort of a, a different sound. You know, everyone's gravitating towards sort of emotional piano and felt pianos and that kind of thing, and I think I would rather go to that because it's such a beautiful sound. Um, so let's actually look at the interface that we've got here. Okay, so at the top here, we've got our microcontrols, um, which are actually available in quite a few of the CryptoCypher libraries. And what's really nice about them is 
that they affect the single note. The last note you played, they only affect that. So if I change the, um, the decay on this one, make it a bit more. But when I play the next one, it's still the same. The ones either side of it are the same. So these microcontrollers only control the last note you played. And then of course we've got uh, the more global controls, um, such as the attack, the hold, decay, sustain, release. Um, you've got your tuning, um, your pan, and different mics. So let's just have a quick listen to the different mics. Let me just make sure I don't have any of my own reverb on this. I do. Let's turn that off. There we go. Okay. So this is mic one. Okay, and mic two. Okay, so you've got a close mic and a far mic. And back together again. Okay, legato mode. This is great for doing trills because Obviously a plucked instrument doesn't really play legato, not, not really, but if I hold down that C and alternate between the C sharp, you get really fast trills. Which is actually more like how the instrument would be traditionally used to create these sort of drones. So that's a useful one there. Okay, so if you look down the bottom, um, we have key switches. So we can turn legato mode off and on using C and C sharp down there. Okay, um, we've also got different articulations on the instrument. So this is the normal one. a bit more of the slap against the board there and then we've got um, full on muted I think the next one is okay so if I go, I can I can actually palm mute the strings so we're dampening it which is a very useful effect to have um, so instead of using a volume automation, you can have a far more natural dampening of the strings. Um, which, and we like natural things. We like things to sound more natural as opposed to uh, computer computer affected. Now, again, we have different effects. We have um, at the top we've got mute, heat, doubler, and wide. Um, heat adds a bit more grip to the sound. Mute obviously mutes it. Doubler um, will make it sound like there's more than one of it. So let's have a quick listen. So that's double it all the way up. Let's go back to the original sound here. Okay, double it on. So it just gives it a bit more warmth, a bit more depth to it there. And then there's the stereo width, so you get it really wide. Okay. We've got our reverb, so this is what it sounds like without the reverb. Okay. And again, the reverbs have been chosen really carefully. Um, so we've got ambient room here. Have something different, a chamber room. Okay, a hall. It's getting quite big there. And then if we go all the way up, we've got plate reverb. Which is quite nice. Moving on, let's turn the reverb off. Uh, we have a compressor. 
equalizer. I'm not going to go through those because I'm sure you know what those do. Um, the phaser sounds quite cool. Especially when used in conjunction with all of these other effects. Get all of these on. So, should we have a different key? that might be a little bit too much but you can see how all of these instruments um, can be adapted and that you don't have to go with the natural sound you can really change them and, and fit them into the sound that you really want okay let's talk about percussion now there are three percussion libraries um, by crypto cipher uh, there's the Dolak, the tabla and the tabla terrain and then there's also some loops, uh, pre-recorded loops, um, which again are really, really useful if you don't quite have the time to program your drums. However, as I will show you, there is almost no excuse for it because these are so easy to program a great sound. Um, so let's let's have a listen to them first. So th this is the dot act that I've got here. Okay, so you've sort of got the uh, sort of a um, low, high, low to mid, mid to high kind of sound with the dolak, and then a high sound with the tabla. Um, let's have a look at the actual programming itself. The interface. Okay, so the interfaces are largely the same. So we're looking at the dolak. Okay, so again, we've got our different mic positions. So let me just put this on a loop over here so we can hear what's going on. Let's put that just on there. And then we can, and we can loop it. Okay, so let's have a look at these different mic positions. So at the moment we've got close mic. A little bit further away. And a little bit further again. Okay, cool, and I've chosen sort of a, a, a reasonably sized room. Um, again, we've got the same controls that we saw before. We've got mute, heat, doubler, and wide. Um, I've obviously um, elected to turn the wide one on to give it a bit more width to it. Um, then we have different velocities for the left hand and the right hand, which brings me down here. Okay, so these yellow keys on the right are the right hand, and the yellow keys on the left are the left hand. Um, the right hand um, as it is pulled a bit tighter and it is a, a smaller end to the drum, so it obviously has a higher pitch sound. Um, so you get this. Okay, and down down here we got our bass sound. So turn it up a bit. Okay, and we've got some scraping on the drum there. Not 
entirely sure how that sounds created. I, I think that they're stretching and stretching the skin. But it's an interesting sound. Okay, and the red keys at the top, we have um, when you push the key down, then you hear a hit, and when you lift off the key, then you hear a hit. So you can do really fast things. Which is really useful again. Um, okay, and again, we've got the micro controls here at the top, so, so where's that? That one. So again, these only control that specific key that you just pressed. Um, but say I really didn't didn't like the sort of end to that one, but I did like the hit. So what I could do is I could take um, the sustain down and the release. So I can get rid of that sort of boing kind of sound. Just on that key though, all the others are still exactly the same. And you can hit the reset button if you don't like what you did. Um, again, we've got phaser here. So we'll just see how that sounds. for creating some cool rhythms there. And if I remember, if you remember I told you how easy it was to program these drums, and because there's so many round robins and it's so well recorded, just look at how simple this is. I mean, there's been no thought gone into this particular percussion loop. Um, so I've just gone up and I've gone down and chucked in some notes there, and then I've put a velocity curve in here just to show you how it sounds when it gets a bit quieter, but there's seriously no thought at all gone into this, but have a listen to this. That's really great, and with a little bit more tweaking, that will sound fantastic. I mean, I, I literally programmed that in about 10 seconds. It, it's, it's that good. And the same for the, um, the tabla and the tarang. They're just really really simple to use really easy to get a good sound straight away and all those sort of like double hits on the drum i just think they they add to it i mean i don't mind they can throw those in wherever i mean some people might get really really particular about where those go in and really want to get that <laughs> kind of sound to it um for this particular track i didn't mind so much i just wanted it, it, it all that sort of adds to the realism of just a real player just kind of busking it as he goes which i really liked um, so let's have another listen to the tablet on its own. Okay, so the only reverb I've got on that is the reverb that is actually uh, built into the instrument here. So I'll turn that off. Mic one, mic two, so it widens it up a bit. Get the stereo width going. Gets it really wide. A bit of heat. And again, we've got the phaser, the equalizer, reverb, and compressor, and of course the micro controls at the top. Let's just have a quick listen to these. Now, 
Now, the terrain, I couldn't quite get that into this track, um, but it's still a really useful instrument. The reason I couldn't quite get it into this track is because I couldn't quite find room for a pitched percussion instrument. So if we actually go and have a listen to how this sounds. Now the UI um, is almost the same. This time we've got some, some different different um, articulations down here. So we can change the speed, the speed of the rolls and the speed of the flam on the drum. Um, but let's have a quick listen to how this one sounds. Okay, so that completes my little tour through CryptoCyphers libraries and how they might be useful um, for more than you think. Uh, they're not just your, your traditional ethnic libraries. There's a lot more in there to get stuck into. Um, even more if you're as sort of comfortable um, with your sound design chops, um, getting stuck in there with uh, crazy reverse reverbs and distortions and all that kind of thing. Um, but equally, the, there's loads in there that's um, that's really useful for um, sort of atmospheres and, and drones and all that kind of thing um, as well as um, well I guess it goes without saying that any really well recorded sound can can become something very different and very useful um, that said the sounds as they are as you heard um, are great uh, I really like that small mandal the vocals are really well recorded uh, and uh, there's a, a wealth of stuff to get stuck into. If you remember with the vocals, I mean, there was um, a full keyboard of, of phrases, and then there was um, eight times three times the number of samples that they had there. And then, of course, they've got all the round robins and all the fading in and out and the dynamics and so on. So there's a lot of thought, a lot of love gone into these libraries, and I, for one, can see myself using them a lot more in future. And um, I implore you to go and check out the website and um, have some fun. See you soon.